Okay, let me show you our little goodbye demo. We call it the goodbye demo because it actually illustrates a very interesting point. Uh, but the key point is being responsive. So let's see if we can make this work here. We're going to, I'm running it up on a server. Uh, you can see I'm gonna run a little Spring Boot application up on a server, it's an EC2 server at web.bird.red. I keep that server up just for the purposes of doing a demo and then I take it down. And in this case, I just stood up this endpoint and let's actually go hit refresh here on our browser. So you can see as I make a request to the goodbye, API goodbye endpoint, we'll show you this code in a little bit, it actually responds with goodbye and gives me a little message, both on the console and of course on the client side. Now here's what's interesting. If I hit this with overwhelming load, is it still responsive? So I'm gonna basically make 51 requests to a thread pool that is only 25 deep. So it's a thread pool of 25, that's what I set on the Spring Boot application. And then you can see that it completely locks up my browser. And I'm gonna wait and wait and wait until a thread becomes available, there it is, to service my request. And then as soon as I make another request, you know, I'm gonna wait and wait and wait till a thread becomes available to service my request. This is the default way to do enterprise Java programming. And it doesn't matter if it's Spring Boot based on Tomcat and the traditional programming model there, or it could even be my favorite, you know, Wildfly. So not to pick on Spring Boot, I'll show you what it looks like in a Wildfly standpoint. And it works the exact same way. The programming model is basically the same. The threading model is basically the same. The concept being that you have a thread pool and you have a thread per request, and that's all you get. Therefore, it's easy to use all those resources on the server side. And it is different for a Vertex-based application, which has a thread per core. All right, so there's our Wildfly Swarm app. Let me go ahead and run. Again, 51 client-side request. And let's see here, and you can see it has locked up my browser again, and I'm gonna wait and wait and wait until a thread becomes available to service my request. And this is super simple. We'll show you the code in a second. It's super simple logic. All it's doing is processing, uh, calculating pi, but I'm going to wait as a user until a thread becomes available. And you know how users are, right? They'll get hit refresh, 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 and keep on throwing you requests that you can't handle. And the worst part is your server thinks it still needs to fulfill that request, even if the user's long gone and, made, and, and gone away. So let's kill that, and let's look at the Vertex version of that. Uh, there we go. So I'm gonna run the Vertex version. The Vertex version pops up a fair bit quicker on the server, so there we go, there's my Vertex version. And I'm gonna throw in the 51 request again, and let's see what it does here. Let's go, there it goes, okay. And you can see it's a little slow, but it's still responding. So it doesn't kind of block the, it doesn't lock it up, it's still responding. It's a little slow, but it's okay, because it is processing my request. What it is, is there's a foreground thread, a thread per core that's part of the event loop for Vertex, and it is not blocked. It basically passes those blocking requests off to a bunch of background handlers, so those guys are still doing the work. You'll see them do their job here in a second. Oh, here they come back now. Um, but you can kind of see that my application continues to be responsive. So being responsive in the face of overwhelming load is super critical. And let me show you the code here for that. Uh, so right here, this is my Spring Boot code for this. And all this is available in open source on GitHub. But you can see it's pretty straightforward. It has a method here. You basically, we call it the nap method because it takes so long to run. And it's basically going to uh, calculate pi to 20 thumbs decimal point. Um, and I sometimes manipulate that number back and forth depending if I'm running on my local laptop or running on this uh, EC2 instance that I'm running up there. And then we have the goodbye endpoint. So it should be noted the end user or the browser is coming to this endpoint, yet the client is hitting this endpoint, but it still doesn't matter. There's, it uses up all the, all the threads in the thread pool. Same thing here with the Wildfly Swarm. You can kind of see it has at get and at path. So the only thing really different here is the annotations are different between the Spring world and the Java E world. Okay, so that's all pretty straightforward. And the Vertex world, the business logic's the same. The NAP business logic, the buy business logic is virtually identical. What is unique is how you set it up. And you have this concept of this expressive router, and you basically say router.get, router.post. Here, I'll show you that. Uh, or you can see the post right there. Um, router.delete, basically, that's how you set up your URLs and your endpoints and you identify your handlers. And the magic to this was basically saying, we know that that particular piece of business logic is very slow, so we call that a uh, blocking handler, and that basically mapped it to a background thread automatically for us. And just to kind of show you my application app properties for my Spring Boot app, there's, there it is for 25 threads. 
so that's basically it and that's what we call the goodbye demo and uh, again it's all out there in github land if you want to check it out but it definitely is a fun way to kind of experiment with things and while i do know there's async ways to do stuff in an uh, enterprise java world uh, it's just super easy and super clean in this purely reactive world thread per core world that you find from vertex